All right, the founder and president of the Institute for Governance and Sustainable Development, Darwood Zelki, joins us now from Washington. Um, Darwood, good to have you back on the show. Um, all right, so uh, greenhouse gas emissions and the burning of fossil fuels, these are sort of concepts that we're all familiar with when it comes to playing a role in potential natural disasters. But uh, I know that you're watching the news story. One character in there said, uh, unjustified interference in nature. Are we seeing that uh, you know, unregulated construction can also play a role in climate change? Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, we're, we know that the planet is warming and that the Himalayas and other mountains are warming at twice the global average. Uh, the melt rate for mountain glaciers has doubled since 1975. And we're going to see extreme examples of what just happened more and more in the future. So number one, let's make sure we slam on the brakes for warming. And it's not just from the CO2, carbon dioxide, from fossil fuel use, but it's also the short-lived climate pollutants, the super pollutants, methane, black carbon, soot, um, and HFCs that can give us the fastest way to slow down the warming. That's the key here. Stop the warming in the near term. And then, yes, to your specific question about the built environment, let's be very careful about the dams and the other infrastructure that we know we're going to be stressed and, in cases like this, overwhelmed by further melting, further glacier uh, slides like we just saw. That means consider removing dams, consider strengthening dams, and prepare for what is going to come, even as we slam on the brakes for the near-term warming by cutting the short-lived super pollutants, along with cutting CO2 by shifting to clean energy. So this is a tragedy, but it's a tragedy that will unfold many times more in the future if we don't take very aggressive action today. Okay. Uh, three years ago, I was fortunate enough to spend about 50 days with a scientific team in Antarctica. And there, I really got to see firsthand how important glaciers are and how they act as sort of like a protective layer, not only on our planet, but also uh, of, 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 of the, the oceans out there. Uh, but there's so much more to that in terms of rapid glacial met. Talk to us about some of the negative effects. Well, I mean, I think the one that's the, the most worrisome in the near term is the loss of the Arctic sea ice. Now, this is a great white shield that sends a tremendous amount of incoming solar radiation safely back to space today. But we're melting that at an incredible rate. You may have seen a story the last week about the ship that made it through the Arctic just the uh, the last couple of weeks with barely any help from an icebreaker because the Arctic has lost so much of its strong multi-year ice down to just the fragile first-year ice. When we lose that great white protective shield, we're going to add 25 years worth of climate emissions and bring what we fear is the two-degree target uh, all the way from maybe uh, 20 40 into the present today. So that, that shield is, is probably the first of the, the great tipping points that we're going to see to accelerate feedbacks and, tipping, and uh, the other tipping points. Uh, the Antarctic, as you point out, is also a huge problem because when you lose that ice, it's land-based ice, and it will add many, many meters to sea level rise, and that's going to cause you know, cities and uh, their populations to have to move much, much sooner than people are anticipating. So the, the, the challenge is the mismatch of speed. Climate change is happening at an accelerating rate, and our solutions are going slower. And it's axiomatic. You can't solve a fast-moving problem with slow-moving solutions. The answer is speed up the solutions. Uh, I want to ask you about those solutions. You know, you also mentioned uh, Tipping Point, uh, which reminded me, 24 hours ago, I was watching 
this UN conference on, on climate change. There, that's a, that's a, it's a term that uh, Sir David Atterbury used. We're, we're getting perilously close to this tipping point. You also mentioned it. You know, if we are to stop this, how do we do it? Well, the, the fastest way to slow down the warming is to cut the short-lived super pollutants because they're short-lived, which means once you stop emitting them, they fall out of the atmosphere quickly and thin this blanket that surrounds the earth that's causing the warming. That is the black carbon soot, and that kills people, about 7 million people a year from indoor air pollution and outdoor air pollution. The HFCs, which are hydrofluorocarbon, primarily used as refrigerants, and we have substitutes immediately to get rid of that, and we're, uh, we've just amended the Montreal Protocol through the Kigali Amendment to phase down those HFCs. Very important that the rest of the world take action on this by ratifying that agreement. You have uh, methane. Methane is a, comes from oil and gas exploration. It comes from landfills and uh, wastewater treatment, and it comes from agriculture. We have strategies in many cases to slam on the brakes of methane as well. And methane is one of the most powerful short-lived pollutants. Now, all of this has to be done in parallel with the cuts to CO2 by shifting to efficient use of energy and clean energy. That's going to take several decades to finally get to net zero. And in the meantime, you got to slam on the brakes with the cuts to the short-lived climate loops. Think of it as um, like stopping a super tanker. That's the CO2. You put on the brakes for CO2. You slow warming slowly. You put on the brakes of the short-lived pollutants. It's like a speedboat. You, you kill the engine, and it's dead in the water in, a, in just a few meters. So you have to do both of these things. You've got to turn off the engines on both of these ships. But we've got to get um, the short-lived ones to keep us in the game long enough for the cuts to CO2 to take effect. Some very good uh, analogies and some very good messages there. Thank you very much. And that Montreal Protocol, it's such a very good example of how the recommendations of the scientific community can have real power over world governments. Some fantastic results there. All right, Darwin Zelke, thank you very much for joining us on the show. I do appreciate your time.